Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss the part 6 of our clinical case study series. So let's begin our today's lecture. So here we have the scenario number 26. A 45 year old female patient complains of cervical pain that radiates to the left anterior arm and the radial side of the hand. On manual muscle testing of the bicep reveals a grade of 3 out of 5. On the diagnosis of the cervical spondylysis, so which of the following is true about the cervical spondylosis? Option A, it is strongly influenced by the genetics. Option B, the onset and the rate of progression not influenced by the repetitive subclinical trauma. Option C, in patients older than 40 years, the chronic cervical degeneration is the most common cause of the cervical spondylosis. And the option D, it affects the vertebral bodies and the intervertebral disc of the neck and the content of the spinal canal are not duly affected. And the correct answer is, Option C. In the patients older than 40 years, the chronic cervical degeneration is the most common cause. And here we have the explanation. The cervical spondylosis is usually caused by the chronic cervical degeneration in individuals 40 years or above. It affects the vertebral body, intervertebral disc, nerve root and the spinal cord. It is not clear whether the genetics play a role in the cervical spondylosis development or the onset and the rate of progression may be influenced by the repetitive subclinical trauma. So the individuals who get load on their head repeatedly are most likely to have developed the cervical spondylosis. Next we have the scenario number 27. The superficial heat modalities use the subcutaneous fat tissues to act as a thermal insulator and inhibit the heat transfer. The heat transfer is classified into three types. Conduction, convection, and conversion. If the physical therapist decides to use a modality that uses the convection mechanism of the heat exchange, so which of the following is the most likely considered? Option A, electrical heating pad. Option B, wire pool. Option C, warm compresses. And the option D, ultrasound. And the correct option is option B, wire pool. Let's see the explanation. Wire pool is the modality that involves the heating through the convection mechanism. Fluid therapy, moist air bath and the wire pool involves in the production of the movement of the transferring medium. The electrical heating pad and the warm compressors are example of the conductive heating where the heat is transferred from one point to another point without the movement of the medium. And the ultrasound make it use of conversion which involves the heat exchange by the conversion of one energy to another form. So here we have the scenario number 28. Which of the following is considered as the most effective orthosis for the use in controlling the rotation and the lateral bending at the cervical spine, usually at C1 to C3? Option A, sternal occipital mandibular orthosis. Option B, hello brace. Option C, Adelphia collar. And the option D, four postural brace. And the correct answer is option B. Hello brace. And the explanation we have the hello brace is the best orthosis for controlling the rotation and the lateral bending at the cervical spine. The hello device is also the most effective for the use in controlling the flexion and extension at the region of C1 to C3. On the other hand, the sternooccipital mandibular orthosis controls extension less effectively than the other orthosis. Next, we have the scenario number 29. A physical therapist is observing a patient who is walking with the crutches. The patient advances both crutches forward and then swings both legs past the crutches at the same time. Based on this particular sequence, the patient is demonstrating which crutch gate. Option A, two point crutch gate. Option B, swing to crutch gate. Option C, swing through crutch gate. And the option D, tripod crutch gate. And the correct answer is option C, swing through crutch gate. And the explanation is the patient is walking with the crutches using the swing through crutch gate. This technique is recommended to the patient who are unable to fully bear the weight on both legs. In option A, they indicate that the patient with the weakness in both legs. And in option B, swings both legs at the same time without going past the crutches. In option D, which indicated to the patients with paraplegia. They are taught to do the swing to gate pattern. At the end, we have the last scenario. 
In the therapeutic method of transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, application can use one of the three options of standard setting. So, which of the following standard setting is the most appropriate for the conventional TENS? Option A High frequency stimulations from 40 to 150 Hz or at low stimulus intensity with the current set from 10 to 30 Hz. Option B Low frequency stimulations from 1 to 10 Hz at high intensity stimulus. Option C High frequency breast at low intensity stimulus and the frequency of the impulse within each breast is 100 Hz. And in option D, low frequency stimulus at low intensity stimulus. And the correct answer we have option A, high frequency stimulus from 40 to 150 Hz and at low stimulus intensity with the current set from 10 to 30 Hz. And here we have the explanation. In the conventional tense unit that delivers the high frequency stimulus from 40 to 150 Hz at low stimulus intensity with the current set at 10 to 30 Hz. In option B, that the standard setting is acupuncture like setting. And in option C, there is a standard setting for the pulse tense units. So that's all for today. We are going to cover the next scenarios in our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.